Today, we're gonna to fit an all metal micro Swiss hot end to the end of three with some back-to-back -back testing. I'd like to start by acknowledging the mods that I've been covering recently on Ender 3 on this channel aren't necessarily essential. Both the Ender 3s that I reviewed printed quite well out of the box and all of the mods I've done recently, including this one, are to add extra functionality and ease of use. In this video, we're looking at a Micro Swiss all metal hot end. It goes for just under US $65 and it's designed and machined in the USA. I've already covered a similar product in the past on my Franken Doodle, which started life as a Zortrax M200. In that instance, it was essential to get the printer working properly, but in this case, it's simply a request video from one of my patrons. You might be asking, what does all metal hot end actually mean? Here is a cutaway of the standard CR10 and Ender 3 hot end. As you can see, PT FE tube goes the whole way down into the melt zone. It butts against the nozzle in the hot end. If it's not seated, however, and there's a gap, the filament can expand and clog your printer like this excellent photo by Lou Catfield shows. Now this picture from Micro Swiss illustrates that it is in fact all metal. The PTFE tube comes in the top, but the whole rest of the assembly has no plastic at all. The thin heat break in between the upper and lower parts is actually from titanium to stop heat creep. When you disassemble the standard hot end, you'll be able to see just how far the tube goes down inside. So now you should be clear on what all metal hot end means versus the standard one. So let's have a look what we get with our package. All of the components come neatly and nicely packaged inside this little box. And inside the lid of the box is a QR code that leads to the installation instructions. That points to a nice YouTube video on their site, goes for just under seven minutes and covers everything comprehensively. Once I had disassembled, I took the chance to put the old and new hot ends side by side to make a more detailed comparison. On the left, we have the new Micro Swiss edition and on the right, we have the standard hot end. As you can see, they are very close to each other dimensionally. They have the exact same mounting system for the heater cartridge and the thermistor. Whereas the standard heater block has some wrapped Captain Tate insulation, we have a nicely molded silicon boot for the Micro Swiss. As you can see in the Micro Swiss, the path for the filament is just under two millimeters, whereas there's room for the Bowden tube to go down inside the standard hot end. I have to note just how much quality is oozing from the Micro Swiss hot end when you inspect the machining, the tolerances and the fit. It's simply stunning. It's also worth noting that the nozzle on this model has a coating to help you print abrasive materials like carbon fiber and glow in the dark. When I align them with two screws side by side, you can see that the Micro Swiss is a couple of millimeters shorter. We're ready to start our install, but before I do, I'd like to make a note on compatibility. According to the Micro Swiss website, this is compatible with the Creality CR10, Ender 3, and a number of other printers. It doesn't, however, list the Tipo Tornado, but I pulled all of the fan covers off, held this up, and I don't see any reason why it won't be compatible also. It will be smaller than what comes standard on the Tebow, and that means you can fit things like the Hero Me ducts that I'm now running on my Ender 3. Now, the official install is pretty comprehensive, so I'm gonna go a little bit quicker in my guide here. The first thing to note is that the two grub screws that retain the heater cartridge need to face down. After that, you can slide the heater cartridge in and tighten them. Fairly tight, but not so tight that you crush anything. After that, the thermistor pushes into the little hole next to it. And once again, you carefully do up the retaining screw, nice and tight, but not so tight that it pierces through and cuts the wires. After this, you're gonna screw in the titanium heat break and then use the supplied little spanner to tighten it up. Don't worry about getting it too tight at this stage. We're gonna spin the heater block around and screw in the hardened nozzle. Once again, use the supplied spanner, but don't worry about getting it too tight yet. At this point, we're ready to use the same screws to put on the new heater block. These should be as tight as you can get them without stripping the thread because we don't want any wobble introduced into our assembly. We're now gonna take our hot end assembly and slide it up vertically inside the heatsink. There's a little grub screw that rides in the groove to retain it at the right height. You want this to be firm, but not so firm that you strip the threads. There should be no wobble if it's done up properly. Now you would have noted that our PT FE tube doesn't need to be as long as before. So I measured and cut off roughly an inch before I installed it in the new hot end. Here I'm cutting with the Capricorn PT FE tube cutter. Push it in from the top nice and firmly. And then after that, use the retaining clip that comes with it to lock up the fitting to stop it from wobbling around. This is a really nice touch to include. You're now ready for the partial reassembly of your hot end assembly. I'm using the Hero Me duct, so I slide it down from the top, put my BL Touch mount into place, and tighten up the two screws that hold everything together on the left hand side. You can do these up very tight to prevent any chance of wobble being introduced into your prints. 
It's important to reinstall your fan. My Noctua 40x10 fan is working faultlessly for a few weeks now. Your next step is to heat up the hot end to around 240 degrees. I found this next step a lot easier if I took off the silicon boot because you're going to put in the supplied spanner with a 7mm socket and tension the two against each other once they're hot. To finish off we're going to slide on our silicon boot and then reinstall the rest of our part cooling fan components. Now because the new hot end is a couple of mils shorter than the old one, you're going to need to at minimum re-level your bed. And if you're using auto bed leveling, you're going to need to reset your Z offset. I found that I needed to remove my two spacer washers for my BL Touch to move it up before I did the Z offset. And that got everything closer to where it should be. The last thing we need to do is tune our PID. And if you don't know what PID is, I'm going to have a link to the Wikipedia page in the description. The main thing you need to know is that it's an algorithm that the firmware uses to control the hot end temperature. Anytime you make changes like we have here, it's a good idea to retune it. And fortunately, Marlin has that built in. So I'm in Octoprint for this step, but you could use Pronterface, Simplify 3D, anything that has a terminal window where you can input G code directly to the 3D printer. I'll link this Marlin reference page in the description and it's got all of the commands that you will need. So what we're going to input is M303. You could do C for cycles, the default is five, so I'm not going to enter that. You could enter an E value, but we've only got one extruder and the default is zero, so I don't need to worry about that. I will enter the S argument, and that's going to be my target temperature, and you should pick the one that you print at the most. So for me, I mainly use PLA, and my profile is set at 200. That's the minimum we need, so I'm going to send it, and then we'll wait for the process to run through. So we have confirmation that it started, and if we switch to the temperature tab, we can see that it's starting to climb. Okay, our process is finished. There's a bunch of data here and at the bottom are some results. If we switch back to our temperature tab, you can see I've actually done this twice and here are our five cycles that it's just finished going through. Now we've got two options with what we can do here. We can go back into Marlin firmware and search for this exact section and put in these three numbers or we're going to enter it in and save it to the EEPROM using G-code. If we look at the reference for Marlin, there's room to put in our three values, PID and some other optional things that we don't really need to worry about. So the G code we're going to use to save it is M301. I've entered those exactly as they appeared in my results. So now I can hit the send button. We get confirmation that it's been stored. Finally, all we need to do is save it to the EEPROM with M500. Now, if you're using old firmware, perhaps without EEPROM support, you're not going to be able to store it this way. So you'll need to put this M301 line in your start G code, and therefore it will be loaded into the memory of the printer every time you start a print. In the intro to this video, I promised you some back-to-back -back testing. So let me talk you through what I did. My test file you might've seen on the channel before, it's the micro all-in-one 3D printer test of Thingiverse. Same filament, same G code, and you'd be hard pressed to really tell any difference. The circles around the bridging tests are good and most of the text and small details are captured quite well. For this test, I lowered my retraction to only four millimeters for reasons which I'll explain shortly. And you can see there is some little bits of stringing introduced from this. Once again, on the underside, the overhang test is much of a muchness, not really any difference here. So if there's no difference in quality, why would you fit an all metal hot end? It mainly comes down to one thing and that's temperature. According to Creality, the max is 255 for the standard Ender 3. The reason for this is the PTFE tube. If you look at the safety precautions on the Capricorn tube website, it shows that as the temperature goes up, harmful fumes are emitted that are dangerous to birds and when it gets even hotter, dangerous to humans as well. This all metal hot end moves the tube up away from the hot zone so it's no longer an issue. For PLA, you don't need the higher temperatures, but what if you want to print polycarbonate? This X3D filament needs between 230 to 270, above what the standard Ender 3 can do. Nylon is a similar story, needing 270 degrees. It also needs a heated bed of 120. Please note that if you have a magnetic bed like fitted to the Ender 3 Pro, they can only go up to 80 degrees Celsius, so you won't be able to print any of these filaments even with this Micro Swiss hot end. If you want to see more on printing with these high temperature filaments on the Ender 3, click the card now to see a video from Design Prototype Test. A little bit more food for thought from the Micro Swiss installation video, they make a few recommendations. The retraction in my case was definitely not enough for four millimeters, so I'll be upping that back to where it used to be. The hot end temperature didn't need to be changed with my X3D PLA filament, and I already had my cooling fan running at 100% of its capacity. That brings us to the end of this video. A lot of people requested this in the last few months, so please leave a comment below. Are you still gonna head this direction, or do you think it was more of an upgrade than it actually is? Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.